Hey, welcome to today's video. I'm Prof Omar, and today we're going to revisit a classical problem from undergraduate mathematics, but look at it from a completely different perspective than what we're used to. So the question is to find all infinitely differentiable functions f from the reals to the reals that satisfy this second degree homogeneous linear differential equation, namely that f double prime minus f 5f prime plus 6f is zero. Now there are typical ways to go about this from stuff that we learn in an undergraduate class, but I don't want to think about how to do this without using those tools, doing something that's completely different that brings in linear algebra as a way to uh, approach this problem. So what we're going to do is think about these functions. I'm going to introduce a vector space V, and that vector space is the set of all functions that are continuously differentiable and all of their derivatives um, are differentiable. So this is the set of infinitely differentiable functions from the reals to the reals. And we're going to introduce a linear transformation, D, that goes from the vector space to itself. And it takes any function and differentiates it. Now, if f is infinitely differentiable, then so is f prime right? So this is a perfectly fine definition. It takes a function from the vector space to itself. Uh, also, d is in fact linear. Uh, the sum of the derivative of two functions is the derivative of the sum. Also, the derivative of a constant multiple of f is that constant, constant multiple times the derivative of f. This, in fact, is a vector space. If you add two infinitely differentiable functions, the sum is infinitely differentiable. A function that's infinitely differentiable times a constant is also infinitely differentiable. So we have a valid vector space and a valid linear transformation on that vector space. So what does that have to do with our problem? Well, we can cast the problem of this expression being zero as something in terms of this differential operator on this vector space. How do we do that? Well, f double prime is the application of d to f twice, which we can write as d squared f. This is the application of five times the differential operator. So altogether, we can say that a function satisfies this differential equation if and only if d squared f minus 5 times df plus 6 times the identity linear transformation applied to f is 0. We can factor this linear transformation altogether as being d squared minus 5d plus 6 times the identity applied to f being 0. So now we've cast the problem of satisfying this linear homogeneous second degree differential equation as a function lying in the null space of a linear transformation. In particular, f satisfies this differential equation if and only f is an element of the null space of this linear transformation right here, d squared minus 5d plus 6 times the identity. So we've transformed this problem into something dealing with the null space of a linear transformation. And so our question is, what is this null space? Can we completely characterize what it looks like? OK, what we'll prove is that this null space can actually be represented as something that looks quite a bit different. It can be represented as follows. If we think about d as a variable, this side here can factor into d minus 3 times the identity and d minus twice the identity. And so there's a theorem that says because these two as polynomials in d have no common factors, that this null space is the null space of d minus 3i direct sum the null space of d minus 2i. Now you might ask the question, what does this even mean? Well, what it means is that anything, the set of things that are in the null space of this linear transformation 
are sums of things in the null space of this one and the null space of this one. And anything in here can be expressed uniquely as a sum of something in here and something in here. So what we'll do to proceed is figure out what the null spaces of these things are as a second step, and then as a first step, prove why this equality occurs. If you like this different perspective so far, before we go on, definitely click the like button and subscribe to the channel if you wanna see these different approaches to different problems from undergraduate mathematics in future videos. And so now, what I'd like to do is think about why this equality occurs, and then go ahead and use it to figure out what this expression here is to eventually solve this differential equation. Okay, so we're curious why the null space of this linear transformation is the null space of these two, where the product of these two is precisely this thing. And what I'm gonna do is prove something a little bit more general. Let's say this polynomial here was the polynomial p of x, and this is the polynomial q of x. Then this thing here is the polynomial p of x times q of x. And what I'm gonna prove in general, um, of course this is p and q applied where x is replaced with the, the linear transformation d. So um, really here I should have p of d, q of d, et cetera, but I'll write these in terms of x just for now. And so what we're gonna prove is in general that if you have a linear transformation d, that the null space of p of d, q of d, is the null space of p of d direct sum the null space of q of d provided that p of d and q of d have no common factors. Okay, so let's see how this goes. Um, the thing I'm gonna rely on here is the following. If p and q don't have common factors, then there's a way to write the polynomial one as a polynomial combination of p and q. What that means is I can find polynomials a of x and b of x so that one is a of x p of x plus b of x q of x. Now, you might not believe this, but I can probably convince you that this is true when you have linear polynomials, right? So for example, in our situation, we have x minus three and x minus two. Right, and if you want to find polynomials a and b to make this one, you can rewrite this as a plus b times x plus negative 3a minus 2b. And then notice if you make a plus b zero and this quantity one, you can solve for a and b to figure out what they ought to be. They'll be constants in this case and consequently figure out what these a of x and b of x are, which will be constants in this particular situation. And if these things change to different values instead of three and two, we sort of have the same phenomenon and be able to figure out what these things are. For more general polynomials, um, this phenomenon holds for a lot of reasons. You may have heard of something like Bezu's lemma or be familiar with rings and know that the ideal generated by two relatively prime polynomials is the whole ring. Um, so things like this might help, but they're, they're not necessary for our purposes. So don't worry if you haven't heard any of those. Okay, so let's go ahead and prove this equality. So there are sort of three things involved. Um, I'm gonna give names to each of these vector spaces. I'm gonna make the null space of uh, P, D, Q, D, B, U. I'll make this space here, the null space of P, D, B, W and the null space of q of d, b, z. All right, so first, we'll prove that we have containment in each direction, that u sits inside of u, w plus z, and w plus z sits inside of u. And then that'll establish that u is the sum of w and z, but we also need to know that the sum is direct, so that is equivalent to stating that these two w and z don't have any common elements besides the zero vector. So the intersection of w and z is a zero vector. Okay, so let's go about establishing each of these things. So we'll start here and pick an element u in u. So that means we know that p of d, q of d, 
times the vector u is a zero vector because u lies in a null space of p of d q of d. And our question is, why is it the case that we can represent u as a sum of something in w and something in z? Okay, well we'll use this fundamental, e fundamental equality that I mentioned. u by this can be represented as a of d, p of d, plus b of d, q of d, that linear transformation, applied to u, because this is the identity applied to u. So u is a of d, p of d, u, plus uh, b of d, q of d, u. Again, because if you apply the linear transformation, that's the sum of these two things to u, you'll get u back because of this. Okay, so this already looks like it's the sum of two things. So maybe we can see that it's the sum of something in w and something in z. So let's look at w. w is the null space of p of d. So we wonder, are any of these terms annihilated by p of d? Well, if you look at this term here, if you apply p of d to it, Applying a polynomial of d as a linear transformation, we can reorder the way any of these are written. So this is the same as b of d times p of d q of d u. Okay, but p of d q of d u is zero, so this is zero. So p of d applied to this entire term right here is zero. And that means this entire term lies in the null space of P of D. And P of D, the null space of P of D was W, so this is in W. Okay, you can see a similar thing happens with Z. If I apply Q of D to this, we'll have a Q of D that we can move in here. Get Q of D, P of D is U is zero. And that'll give us um, that this expression here lies in Z. So by a similar type of observation, this thing lies in Z. And so in fact, U is in W plus Z. Cool. So let's move on to proving that W plus Z lies inside of U. Okay, so to establish this, um, if we take something in W, that means it's in the null space of P of D. So if W is in W, then we know P of D times W is zero. And similarly, if we pick a Z in Z, then Q of D applied to this vector Z is a zero vector. And now the question is, why is it the case that W plus Z lies in the null space of P of D, Q of D? So what we need to establish. Okay. So we have W plus Z here. This is, and if we apply P of D, Q of D, we want that expression to be zero. Now we can rewrite this as P of D, Q of D, W, plus P of D, Q of D, Z. Okay, now Q of D, Z is zero, so this vanishes. And these two operators commute because they are polynomials of the same linear transformation. So we could rewrite this as Q of D, P of D, W, and the advantage of doing that is that P of D, W is zero, and so this is zero as well. So when we apply P of D, Q of D to W plus Z, we do get zero, and that means that W plus Z lies inside of U. Okay, great. So together, these two now tell us that U is W plus Z, meaning that anything in the null space of this linear transformation can be written as the sum of something in this one and this one. Now the question is why this expression, writing it as a sum, is unique, and we can establish that by figuring out why the intersection of these two vector spaces, w and z, is zero. So let's do that now. Okay, so suppose we have w, I guess I will pick a different letter, maybe v, 
in the intersection of W of Z, W and Z, then that means that P of D applied to V is zero and Q of D applied to V is zero as well. Right, and the question is why that forces V to be the zero vector. It's the question we're asking. Well, again, we have this lovely expression here that tells us that V is the same as A of D, P of D, plus B of D, Q of D. applied to V. We can distribute this out to get A of D, P of D, V, plus B of D, Q of D, V. P of D, V is zero, and Q of D, V is zero as well, and so this works out to be the zero vector. So in fact, the null space of this linear transformation is the direct sum of these two, meaning that anything in here can be uniquely written, written as the sum of something in here and the sum of something in here. Cool, so let's go ahead and see how that plays out in actually solving this differential equation. Okay, so earlier we established that if f satisfies this differential equation, that happens if and only if f is in the null space of this linear transformation here. And now we've discussed why the null space of this linear transformation can be expressed as the null space of this one direct sum the null space of this one. And so a way to view what the solutions are to this differential equation are to figure out, um, is to figure out what these two things are and then establish what the direct sum is. So let's first look at the null space of d minus 3i. Now our linear transformation, d, took a function and differentiated it. So something here will satisfy that the application of d minus 3i to f is zero. By linearity, we can make this d of f minus 3f. And so this is saying that f prime minus 3f is zero, or in other words, that f prime is three times f. Okay, so there's a lot of standard ways to solve this first order differential equation. One way, for example, is to divide this side by f and then integrate. If we integrate, we'll get the logarithm of f is three times x plus a constant. And so then f is e to the three x plus or times e to a constant, right? We can put the plus c right over here, um, but e to a constant is a constant itself. So we can rewrite this as some constant, maybe a times e to the 3x. So solutions to this differential equation look like a to the 3x for some x. Okay, similarly, things in the null space of d minus 2i look like b times e to the 2x for some constant b. So, these are the two descriptions of these two null spaces. By our statement before, the null space of this is the direct sum of these two, which means there's a set of things we can get by adding something in here and something in here. So the functions in here are going to look like functions of the form e to the, a e to the 3x plus b e to the 2x, where a and b are some constants in the reals. And this looks very much like the type of solution we would get if we're taking a differential equations course. However, we don't rely at all on things like existence and uniqueness. What we did was prove this directly using linear transformations. And you can kind of see that you could do this um, even if these constants changed, as long as we knew that when we factor this, we get this quadratic, we get two distinct factors right here. Um, if we have something that had a repeated factor, there's another way to go about this using linear algebra as well. Great, so I hope you liked today's video. Again, if you did, click the like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this.